The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. If you're building, or buying, or selling a home, the real estate crew's got news for you at the real estate house party. With attorney Rick Carter. Real estate house party. Paralegal Kathy Holsthausen. Real estate house party. Come in, have fun. And comedian Tony V. Now, here's real estate attorney Rick Carter. Welcome and thanks for joining us here on the Real Estate House Party. Yes, we had to tell Tony V and Christine Hurley we got to get yeah, some information yeah, take done. Take a break. Oh, my. In take my, a uh, break. My, my uh, headphone set is it's like a stereo. It's going. I hear some of it some of the time here. So we'll, we'll, we'll are, work it. Are you sure it's not just you? It might be. It might be. Here, hold oh, on. Oh, boy. Now well, we're I can really... take over the show. Yeah. I gotta... <laughs> Are you the one doing this? <laughs> I get perfectly working headphones. Brace so. yourself for one more. Oh boy, that's all right. And uh, okay, welcome to the real estate house party. <laughs> Any better? Uh, Kathy has killed all the other co-hosts, and she's taken my <laughs> headset away. Yes, it sounds perfect. Thank you. Well, right. Thank to- you. Tony's on vacation again. Uh, Tony's. Well, oh, no, listen to you. Call- Where are you going to be next week? <laughs> he doesn't call it a vacation though, because he has to stand up works. for thirty or forty minutes a night. Right. Standing. Right. Up. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. Four nights out of the week out of Aruba. Yeah. So so 40 minutes out of 24 hours. And that's being generous, 40 minutes. So yeah. maybe it's 15, yeah. 20, yeah. 30 at the Tops. max. Right. Tops. Right. That's more than you're going to be working next week. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to have the 12 ounce curls going Yeah. pretty much um, around the clock. So where are you going? Key West? I'm going to Key West. Yep. And you're we- saving up money for Africa. Yeah. <laughs> What? Still is still a subject to my house, but so hopefully, hopefully their uh, patent stays and they don't watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> we have to tell you about the comedians and uh, everyone. I, I've had a few people ask me about Christine Hurley's story, and we've said this before. Comedians are very good. Um, they'll say things that you know. They just. These are real occurrences, in other words. Well, so I don't pe- know about the front lawn, though. No, he, that's true. All twice. Because right. right. we've had Jimmy Hurley. He was in the audience last mm-hmm. week, and he told me twice. Christine Hurley woke up on her front lawn, and the sprinklers woke her up um, <laughs> in the morning when the kid's bus was pulling up. And then the second time it happened was late at night, and Jimmy Hurley woke up the family to bring them out front to see <laughs> Christine Hurley. <laughs> so anyway, the story about Jimmy leaving the car... Out running, front, with the running, door open, with the door open, and ran into the uh, train uh, train to see how everything's going, and they shut the door. Is a true story. I know. I so love you, that. Yeah. So I'm you, still laughing about it. <laughs> so that's going to be part of Christine Hurley's. Uh, and he shtick got off, now. and he was able to get off in Hartford. I mean, I literally would have had a nervous breakdown from Westwood yeah. to to Hartford. You would have had a nervous breakdown. I would have taken. I would have gone postal. You would have gone um, postal. I would have gone postal. I've seen you go postal for a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've never seen me go postal. Really? Yes. That's what you want to tell yourself. Ed Sullivan, is that true? We've never seen Kathy Holtz go postal? I Post- have not. You, uh, I, I don't I know. Can't. No, 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 no. All right. You haven't, you haven't seen No, that's yet. true. I haven't so. seen the, the machetes coming out. So so we got a lot of real estate to well, make up. Well, we have to make up for last week's shenanigans and apologize to anyone that really wanted to get information because we had none. Usually it's about the four minute mark we get in <laughs> and we start doing real estate. Yeah. I watched at four, at eight minutes, 12, 16, and 20, uh, and we had not done one thing. I asked you I, one question. I think somebody said downsizing. I said downsizing. That was, that was about it. Of- at, at, at minute 20, I came up with t- downsizing, and then I don't know where we left. Then there. it was a downward spiral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because every, with the comedians, it's every word is a joke. Every like word's a joke. You could say glasses, and they right. both have stories to tell, right. and before right. you know it, it's a one big right. laughing big frenzy. Big joke. It's a big joke it's to big them. Jo- it's all fun and games <laughs> till they kick us off the till podcast. kick us off the ear. Yeah, so, so we got to make up for that. So, yeah, so we got a, I got a lot of questions for you and thank you for prepping and reading these notes. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> you said you didn't look at these at all and you asked me if I read the notes. No, I didn't. I, I wrote the notes. So I how did I? Okay. I, I've read them. All right. All right. So we're going to talk about, this is the first time ever, ever being done on this show. It's a seller quiz. Ooh. Seller quiz. And I have 25 questions. For me? Yeah, for oh. you. I mean, do you see anyone else on the panel? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so I have 25 questions. Are they, are they yes or no, true or How false? How many think so we're going to get through? Let's do 25. All right. You think we'll get through 25? Let's do it. All right, here's the first one. And I know you just sold. 
And I always have this problem. It just seems, a couple it seems years like ago. It like two months yeah. ago. Yep. Was it, you just sold two months ago. Yep. First question you got to ask if you're an agent or anyone involved with that seller, are you ready to sell? I've had that situation where- It's a tough- It is tough. And I've had sellers, they didn't know the market was this crazy. So Then they get an offer. They get an offer and all of a sudden they sign the offer and they weren't ready to sell. Right. And sometimes the wife- is on board and then the Sometimes husband gets not. cold feet or vice right, versa. Right. But I remember when we um, bought, because we bought before we sold, Yep. I remember panicking. Yep. I go, now what are we going to do? Do we really want to get rid of this house? But the ball was in motion and you have to- But you thought through it a little bit. You you knew the finances involved and uh, you knew how long- I don't long think you... it was the finances. It was more the well, you uh, knew... the emotional attachment okay, so to let's talk about the that. house that we were in for 25 years. Right. So you had an emotional attachment. So how did you get? How did you allay your fears on selling a house with emotional attachment? Well, I went through all the, um, the, the things that we were going to gain by selling our house. Present house. So it's more of a financial thing. Well, uh, financial in time, like, yeah. you know, we'd spend the whole weekend taking care of the, the property. So three acres of Yeah, we had three acres and we had a pool and we had a hot tub and we had to, we just spent- It doesn't so- sound like you were doing a lot of work around the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that there was, we spent more time either worrying about what needed to get done right. or get, trying to get it done smashed into the weekend or after work and it just, it was taking over our life. Did you uh, run it by the kids? We ran it by the kids. I have um, one friend, I won't mention her name, but- she still hasn't told her two of her kids that she moved. Right. And I she's know, on I her know. second move. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a way bigger problem than location. <laughs> but um, no, no, no. Your I first told- two were fine with it. No, no, no. I, I don't know that they were all that fine with it, but they were all in college and they were all doing their thing. And, you know, they weren't home dealing. They never dealt with the yard or the upkeep of the house or cleaning it or whatnot. So they had an emotional attachment to the house. But what I said was, where we go, you know, home is where the heart is. We're all going together to a new... Well, in new, theory. Well, in theory. <laughs> you know, I, I just said, it's really kind of none of your business what me and dad are doing. Um, if, you, if you want a free place to stay, uh, you can agree. So there was a little bit of pouting, um, yeah. fighting yeah, yeah. over which room that they were going to get. Um, yeah. But it, in actuality, it's all worked out great. They love the location. Um, they love the house. And their friends all come and stay because there's plenty of room. And they- I, ha- I, have a, I have a friend of mine that spent on the show. Um, she was moving. Her, her husband's very handy, very talented. And she sold. And she has a beautiful house down in, in Gloucester area. So, but she has a, another house in the Reading area. She sold that Reading house to buy a two-family so her mother could live on the other side. Yeah. And they, you know, they're, again, the handy husband was doing it all over. But the daughter says, oh, are we poor now? Do we have to move to a two family? <laughs> well, right. So there is, so when you downsize, there is a little bit of a stigma yeah. attached. Like, oh, yeah. they can't afford to live in this big, beautiful house. But guess what? We didn't want to live in that big house anymore because it was just me and Stu and the kids would come home sporadically. So we literally used a den, two bathrooms, kitchen. In a bedroom, like that's yep. all. So, yep. you know, in all honesty, um, but so, so, but the things that we get to do now, as opposed, makes it worth to, it. Yes. So you yeah. you have extra money. You can go on now vacation. You, now you can take an you extra can, vacation once in a while. Yeah, once Good in a for while. You. <laughs> and you can you don't spend the whole weekend. You can afford to have a landscaper. You could ha- afford to have a cleaning lady. Do you have a, do you have a pool guy? I don't have a pool now. And that's the one thing I you do You didn't miss. answer my question. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I have a pool guy, but I, that's for another subject. Uh, okay. So so you get to spend your weekends All right. So that's the very things. first thing. You got to yeah. get over the emotional part of selling a house. Right. And you got to be ready for it. Right. Right. So right. you, And you got to make sure before you put it on the market that you are 100% in. Right. You might have doubts, but you still have to go back right. to your 100% in. So you can't be that like that indiv- individual high head who just sold the house, was shocked, ended up saying, I got to get out of the deal. And at some point, no one really cares what your house looks like. Like, you know what I mean? Like everyone like buys into, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and all that stuff. But really, like as right. long as you have like a, a cold beer or a glass right. of wine for right. one who comes to visit right. cheese crackers right. and no, a place right. to sit, 
it, right. it really it, like I think it. That's why I might in, double wide up my trailer yeah. park that I live in now, and I feel very comfortable in, and I'm well, I'm comfortable with my skin for doing it, yeah, and I have no problems. That's so. why you have to sell your McMansion. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, did you get a uh, your second question? Are you working with a real estate agent? Because we know from our past shows, and I've actually got another stat. Um, and a real to put the stat out. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Selling your house on your own nets you 18.65% less than similar properties. Why? Because you don't have a price right. Correct. Or yeah. you think you're going to save money on a real estate commission when when they price your house, they have their real estate commission um, built in. Right. So that's so how the, they market so the, your house. So the, and it's actually not for, well, we shouldn't talk commissions there, but. Um, don't you forget, even if you sell, try to sell your house on your own, you're going to have a buyer agent coming in and say, listen, for X amount of commission, will you sell this to my buyer? So, and we won't talk commissions, but so you're really not netting the, you know, saving that full X amount. Well, we've had enough real estate agents on our show that maybe you've seen um, that explain how the, you know, what they do for their commission. Right. And honestly, like I honestly look at it as it's it's a, a no-brainer. Right, exactly. Um, you don't have to have to deal with and the open talk, houses yep. and you don't have to, they, they have- You're jumping ahead to some okay. of our oh, questions. Sorry. Nope, sorry, that's sorry, all right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't read the notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we'll talk about open houses then. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get our, from, so our number two question, are you going to be working with a knowledgeable agent, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Number three, are you able to keep the house in showroom condition even after the showings? So here's, here's what I'm saying by this question. So a lot of people, they'll go visit your house during an open house, but like I'm the type, if I'm, if I'm buying a house, I'm driving by that house after hours. Mm -hmm. I'm driving the neighborhood. Look at the lighting. Look in the lighting. So Look all, and see what's going on in the neighborhood. All of a sudden, that fake staging is no longer there. I'm a, you know, it, it does an impression. So you, you do want to keep the house well lit. Well, it's a huge commitment. Yeah. It's a huge commitment once yep. you put your house in the market. Because yep. guess what? The signs out front, no matter what, even if you don't have a showing that weekend, yep. someone's driving by it and has a friend that wants to be in that neighborhood yep. or has a relative that's interested in moving to the town. So there's someone looking at, the, when they see the sign, and I do it too now, you look at the sign, you look at the house. Right. Right? Yep. I actually had an agent, uh, she was selling the next door neighbor's property, and uh, she says, and we have a lot of people in my house. I don't know how people talk about it. Would they tell you to keep all the cars <laughs> off the street? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> they had one in particular, my big black one. They said, yeah, you might want to yeah, move that for yeah. a little bit. I there. asked all my neighbors to hide their campers. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you guys mind moving your campers? Yeah, I'm trying to sell my house. Can you throw some of your husbands in those campers <laughs> while you're hiding them too? All right. So what do you have in mind for marketing for your property? You should be asking your agent, but that's a good question for your seller. This is what's hot lately is uh, drone photography. I'm, so, I'm sorry there's not more accidents with those drones, but that's that's a story for another time. Right. You gotta think They're you gotta still get... mind-baffling to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they do great work. They do great way, work. I think you got to be licensed now but, to do those. Know, so. Every once in a while on like a like a Facebook post, a, like a town, the town that we live in, and they say, well, Johnny was out playing with his drone that he got for his <laughs> birthday. If anybody finds it in the area of like Carpenter Street, could someone let us know? Uh, like they go, <laughs> they go missing, right? Because if you don't know how to drive it. Yeah. I think yeah. you're supposed to have a license. That's, that's that's what I mean. I think, yeah, exactly. So um, 3D presentation is pretty huge yeah. now. And our office can handle some of that yep, too. Yep, we do. Yeah. We have a Matterport yep, camera. Yep, exactly. And we have um, actually have um, some employees that are very good very at it. Very yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So We're not going to name any names. No, 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 no. Because no, no, no. no, they better be working very hard now, not watching the <laughs> Ryan show. Ryan Carter. <laughs> Emily <laughs> Holtzhauser. Renee, Renee Carter. Carter. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we... Uh, that's kind of like Christine Hurley when she doesn't want to name where Jimmy <laughs> where, Hurley lives. Yeah. Oh, where her daughter's working at Bertucci's <laughs> for 12 years. So, well, I'll give you the first letter where he works. Randolph, okay. Randolph. All right. <laughs> so, so how, hold on a second on the photography. Yeah, I'm in no rush. I got I got plenty of time. Well, you got 25 to go and we're at three, right? <laughs> we got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. So um, the one thing that we do hear back on the photography yep. from lay people, from, from customers, clients, and... They don't want to be tricked. They don't want to That's be tricked. That's a great point. Um, they, what do you mean by tricked? Well, you know, the, the broker may say, like, the best lighting is at 3 o'clock. That's, That's all, fine. all well and fine, yeah. except 
um, if you look at pictures of the house and then you go in, you see the house and it doesn't look like the pictures, the, the, the room is either distorted or there's trickery in photography to make the room look bigger or brighter. So the agents or, shouldn't shoot themselves in the foot. So you really, you need to take really good pictures, but they so need to be eight, realistic. If realistic. this 8 by 12 now looks like 24 by 60. And then you walk in and you're you like, walk in and say, this isn't the same house. Right, exactly. So, so you feel the, like you've been duped and then so be- before you even step foot in the house or you know get through the whole house you've already set your mind that right. this is not the right. house for me right photographies are not you should get a professional to do it Without and the stats doubt. on that where a professional photographer will sell the house quicker more money and the same thing get more offers but uh I, I, we've seen some really horrible pictures i've got cars in the driveway cars in the uh, driveway they, they 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 take pictures uh renee was showing me this one where the 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 agent didn't get out of the car. Took a pi- t- took a picture from the car, and you could see the rearview mirror. Yeah. In the, and it, it just give it a shot. I've seen pictures where the agents in, in the mirror. I've yeah. seen uh, dogs tails that it just goes on and on and on so you really have to have a professional photographer right right? and then if they tell you that you need to stage a house whether you either have to um hire a stager or stage it yourself you better stage your house better stage your house giving you valuable invaluable information you better get it right because this buyer is only coming coming your way once this one one particular so let's talk about that because we've we're jumping around, and I appreciate that. This is uh, – I'm, I'm still going to be shocked we get through 25. We are so, going to get through 25. So we're down to 14 now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to stage the house. So let's let's back up a little bit. Um, and there's uh, – we could get 10 agents in here, and we're not going to come up with the conclusion today. Uh, 10 agents, and we could ask them, each one of them, should you do a pre-home inspection? Some will say yes. Because that way you can ferret out any of the issues. Some say no because we might get an offer that's saying we don't even want a home inspection. Some say no because now you got to disclose uh, things that you may not have known you may about. May not your have house. known about it. So there's there's that. And we'll let you decide on that. I think you definitely need a handyman to go through the house though to to do the little things, uh, change the light bulbs. Uh, you need a handyman to change light bulbs? Oh, my God. Oh, Rick Carter does. Sorry. Do you know uh, what a Saul's all is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, the Rick does not, did not up all until right, Ed, about a year Ed, ago. Ed, can we edit today's show? This is not going <laughs> no, well with this one. I don't like it. <laughs> no, some people are handy and some people are We're not. We're talking about that. If and you some watch people the show, are really handy and some people are if, really not. My favorite show is MacGyver. No one seems to be calling me MacGyver. No, I, I can't. I can't do a yeah a generator just with a uh, with a little knife that I have in my pocket. But that's a story for another time. You don't even have a knife in your pocket, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> he does not have a knife in his pocket. <laughs> uh, One time he came up with a um, what do they call those those uh, wrenches? The Allen wrench. Yeah. And I'm like, does anyone have an Allen wrench? And, and I like, had one. Is this it? Is this an Allen? And <laughs> no, like, I had that one. You were shocked. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell did you get that? <laughs> I want to know where Allen is and why they get to name it after him. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Um, if you don't have someone handy around the house like me, you might want to get a handyman. Or you just might want to get a handyman. <laughs> Christine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're having it's some okay. fun today. It's no, okay, no, really, people, we're having some fun some today. Some people, some people are like smart, like you, like can can in other ways ferret yeah, out yeah. problems with purchase and sale agreements yeah, yeah, that yeah. other people can't. So some that show have, Survivor, I wouldn't do well on. Is that what you thinking? If I got uh, oh, marooned on an island, and me and my um, good friend Darlene talk about that, we would not want to be stuck in in the wilderness with a ricotta <laughs> because he would say that's fine we'll just Ed, the fact that the two of them sit around and come <laughs> up with that, that. <laughs> like, not Dal- wanting to be stuck in Dal- the Dal- woods could find it like berries and would you know eat right. for days right, right? and she'd right. like stab right. a fish right. and would eat right. the fish she'd make me eat the fish but right. if you can't get to right. a hotel and check in with a credit card right. it's not going to be Rick- ricotta's forte yeah if you get stuck in Boston calm and I'm your guy <laughs> 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 that, and that's a true story. We that's a true story. Call yeah. Darlene and ask yeah, her. Yeah, if you need to get in and out of Boston, I'm, I'm yeah. your person. And uh, yeah. You, you, yeah, you get stuck there. Yeah, exactly. So 
Back to the handyman. Uh, I knew that was going to be a, a, a not a sore subject, but uh, get a handyman or get the, make sure you have all the little stuff done. Like right, exactly. Cha- change light bulbs. You probably don't need a handyman to change light bulbs. It was but, an example. But if you have like light switches that don't work and yep. stuff like that, that stuff that is going to come up in a home inspection, and then they might be nickel and diamond. My you kids on the- laugh when the when the lights go out in our house. We move. Yeah, <laughs> but doesn't everyone have a light switch that they don't know what it does? Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. So we still do after two years. Renee Carter will tell you about the friend show where they, they for two ep, two two years of that they they flicked the switch out, up and off and uh, never could figure it out. No. Right. But it yeah. goes to something. It goes to something. Yeah, this yeah. one went to the upstairs apartment that they were driving nuts for two years. But another story for another time. We'll we'll do our sitcom episode one of these days. So our point is uh, maybe not do the pre pre. Inspection, yeah, but, maybe not have a, a home inspector come in and go through. But the I house. would go through. I, I I went to an open house the other day, and they had three out of the four lights, you know, on, and the other one, the bulb was out. It just it just looks like you didn't. It looks like you didn't maintain the house. Well, but the other thing is like. If you live in the house, you know that your furnace is 15 years old, and you know the lifetime right, here's on another this one about furnace. The, here's another one: the furnace. Uh, this turned off one of my, uh, my one of my buyer um, clients. Uh, they went and saw the furnace, and you know how they have the repair, you know the repair the sticker. Yeah, yeah, it was like four years old, and to them, they said, "Oh, they're not maintaining the furnace just because they didn't get that updated." Well, that's exactly. So you, for a you couple need to do bucks, it every year. Right. The furnace needs to be maintained every year. Right. You could have a fire in your house. With, right. 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 Or unless you want to move. Right. right. Exactly. Well, that's what Christine wants to do. She wants to burn her house right to the ground. Christine Hurley. Oh, Christine Not Hurley. Not Christine Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. no, no. So, all right. So, uh, that, that might be a suggestion. Here's a good one. Are you okay with negative feedback about your house? It depends on the negative feedback. If it's nothing, if it's something that I can't do anything about, it kind of stinks. No, like, right. Well, the kitchen's too small. Well, I'm not going to fix the right. kitchen. Well, I'm I don't like gonna... the neighborhood. All right. Well, we're not changing right. the name. Na- you're right. 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 Oh, I don't like the school system. But right, if it's if, if it's, it's feedback about the house that you can that you can actually fix or think about. Like someone was complaining about our house that we didn't have a front to back um, living room. We had like a small living room and a small like family room. Right. So we were actually contemplating knocking the okay. wall down. So there's there's we're, we're we're getting off, but it's a great point. You don't want to remodel too much. Of course. You don't want to spend too much. You don't want to call there me crazy. There was another buyer that came down the road. I am that, good at math. You don't want to spend fifteen thousand to make another twenty five hundred. Of course, Ed, of course Ed, not. Am I right on that? Write that one down. All right. All right. It's in the show notes. But <laughs> Stu thought that it would be a quick. It, it may have been a quick fix. Do you right, know what I mean? Right. But you like, got to really. That's why Andy. That's. He could have knocked the wall down. It's really he could have taken a sawzall and <laughs> yeah, cut yeah, that wall yeah, right yeah. out of there. As long as it wasn't a load, load-bearing wall. Do you know what that is? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so if you uh, – you've got to make sure remodeling, you, you, you know. That's why you need a good agent in that respect. That's right. what I was thinking. Well, they may An agent will you- say, yeah, maybe it is better if you have an extra um, – I mean, you've watched those flipping shows. They knock those walls down all the time. All day long. All day long. I said, oh, this is so easy. So. But this is like, the, so a good agent will come in and look at your carpets and say, I'm going to get you, you know, 15 extra thousand dollars if you replace those carpets. Short money for a couple thousand dollars. Yep. Like, because it's the eye, it's the way the eye goes to right. this. Right. And right. it, it, it changes the room, the, right. the flooring does. Yep. So that might be something that they're going to give you, um, you right. might get your return on it. But there are other things that they say you won't get your return on. Right. Like, exactly. You, know, they will you don't want to throw a swimming pool in the before you start. Right. Before you put it on the market. Right. 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 Exactly. All right. Here's one for you. Are you able to manage your expectations in our seller quiz? So expectations are sometimes people overvalue their house. Of course they do. It's very valuable to them. Their kids grew up there. They have the they have the lines on the uh, door where, you where know, they measure it every junior. year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. With where, where the new buyers are going to pull right in and or paint you right look over at, that. Look at the, all, the, all the time that you spent putting a new sunroom on right. and you spent right. all that time like buying new furniture for it and it's your favorite room in the entire right. house. Right, right. But some people might not like the sunroom as much right. as you do. Right. So and they might not like that lavender paint that you, you put your sunroof in, right? So, um, right. So you got to manage that expectation. And we've always said this, the house isn't worth what you think it's worth. It's what the buyer and the market dictates. It's, it's, yeah, it's worth what someone's willing to 
buy it for. So another so. reason you need a good agent. So that's our next question. Are you comfortable with the pricing? So you need a good agent to do that. Are you working with a real estate attorney? A real estate attorney. Why real would estate. you need a real estate attorney? <laughs> Ed Sullivan can answer that pretty quickly there, but don't 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 get the family attorney that's done the divorce work. Well, the you know, work. Um, it is it is specialized. So honestly, like we have buyers that are represented by you know Joe Smith and. What you end up finding out is Joe Smith is the uncle of right. the brother-in-law's sister's right. Right. aunt or whatever. Joe Smith is fictional now, so if there's any Joes That's out it. there. And then- Joe Smith is a great guy, and I'm sure he's a really good attorney, but he's not a real estate attorney. Right. And you have to do their job for them as well. Exactly. Right? Exactly <laughs> right. Walk exactly. Them through. Here's how it works. Exactly. Exactly. We get that a lot. And-, and I tell you what, there have been situations in our office where the buyer has changed their mind you know, after yep. they've signed a binding contract, which is a purchase and sale agreement, and they want out of the deal. Right. And at that point, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do to get out of the deal unless you get denied financing or there's a title problem that can't be fixed. But let me finish. I know what the hand means. The Rick- Did I say anything? <laughs> I know what the hand means. Attorney Ricardo. Show everyone your hand that has a stop sign on it. Go ahead. <laughs> um, attorney Ricardo has gotten people their deposits back when honestly they probably should never have gotten their deposit back. We have back. a good record on that. Yeah, so, we haven't lost. So one. he, um, a real, a good real estate agent. I mean, um, attorney will have your back from the minute you, you know, start this process till the very, very end. And it's 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 money that they typically don't want to spend, but they should spend the money. To should, do it. should they get an attorney? If- if they're buying a deal through cash? Without a doubt. Okay. Without a doubt. All right. Almost treat it as if a bank was involved. You should do the exact same steps. We do the exact same steps. Yeah. So you order a title search to make sure. I've had sellers say, listen, I'm buying oh, this. No I mean, t- buyers, uh, I, I, you know, I'm buying this through cash. Uh, when do I give the seller his check? I go, no, 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 no. There's right. a few steps right. before We have that. to still... We well, still have so to what we, certify the title. And what do we check on? What do we what do we do? We, we look at the registry of deeds, fifty year title search to make sure that um, there's no money owed. Th- there's no if there's a maybe the seller has a mortgage on the property right. that we have to pay it off. Yeah. Or there could be an uh, an air a, a, a probate M- in this heir. In it the, could be a um, tax lien on the property. There's all kinds of things. All if, right. If you guys need, if you guys are doing a cash deal, just call a real estate attorney. Yeah, us. All right. <laughs> Real estate law is one of the unique areas where most of the major contracts are signed before they come to us. It's silly. We've talked about this a million times. I know. And it's so, listen, the listing agreement is signed, the buyer's agent form is signed, the mortgage application is already signed, uh, the offer is signed by both buyer and seller. Which uh, is also an offer is a binding contract until the purchase and sale is signed, and then that takes over. Right. So we, we do beat this to death, but. Uh, if you are going to go it on your own and then call us after you sign the offer, you got to make sure you get everything in the offer, right? Um, we haven't talked about this as much, but you got to you got you get movers lined up early in the process, and you got to vet out those movers. Uh, I've heard of the extremes where movers actually have held people's possessions at hostage. <laughs> I've <laughs> heard of that too. Until they have either up the plan that they, you know, so that doesn't happen as much. I have heard that. Uh, What we usually hear is a mover not being that flexible. um, And we want everyone to know if you're closing at nine in the morning and then buying at 10 in the morning and your movers are all, you know, it doesn't always happen that way. Well, shit happens. (laughs) Ed, write that one down. I just swore for the first time in the podcast, (laughs) shit happens. Every day, okay. So, so if you're supposed to be closing at nine, the some the seller some the seller something has come up and the seller can't be out. And of you're the only property. saying that you just make that up. That's on our letterhead. So okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's on my um, business card. It's on right? your business card. So, but, but this is the, the the point is if you're closing at nine, there's a good chance you're going to close that day. Nine o'clock may or may not happen, and maybe up until the day before the closing, 9 o'clock is not solid. So we had a mover the other day that told our seller, all right, if we can't move you in by 11 o'clock, we have to, we have to bump it to the next day because we're worried about daylight. 
So they said if it's not started by 11 o'clock, which a lot of times they don't, mm -hmm. so you really got to gotta make arrangements with your mover. And the, and the thing is, like, if you know that they're not flexible, then you need to have another plan. You need to either have a hotel room for the night um, or stay with relatives for the night. But you have to come up with plan A, B, C, and D when you're selling a house and buying a house in the same day. Right. right? That's why you can't, you can't say, all right, I'm selling my house next week. And we've talked about this a million times, but you have to have a plan in place, especially at the move. I have a lot of stuff around my house. Uh, uh, luckily, none of it's valuable. So, but it would take some time to, and I think you're going to come up with a plan. Like, all right, one room at a time. You start like three months beforehand and come up with a moving plan. Right. You know, you're either going to donate the stuff, you're going to throw the stuff out, you're going to give it to friends. You and know what we did was we started, I started room by room and I had the boxes ready and I either, like you said, donate, threw away, or we ended up having a yard sale. I, I have no idea what we sold, what we, I was gone for the day. But listen, so when the box... When I haven't I, had a yard sale since we did one on Blueberry Lane where... Are you Ed sure Sullivan, it was Blueberry Lane? It was Blueberry it Lane. Ed, let me know about this. So there was, they, were, they were trying to raise money for the kids' uh, um, church or something. elementary school or something like that. And uh, we sold a vacuum cleaner for 25 cents. I mean, how much of a warranty is coming? The girl drove all the way home, <laughs> started trying to vacuum and didn't work. Really, who thought, you know, for right. 25 cents, drove all the way back and wanted her money back. And did you happily refund No, it? I negotiated it. I yeah. go, I, I'm not sure what you did in the in the meantime. Did you break? Yeah, so. All yeah. sales so are fun. If I could tell you that that was probably 26 years ago. And, and I could, still remember He's it. still yeah. talking about yeah, it. Yeah, there was yeah. something else someone brought back and you were yeah, belly aching about for, it for it, years. I said, you know how much gas you spent coming back to drop but whatever but the thing is once you touch the item and you decide what you're going to do with it just do it like if you have three weeks to get it done you don't have a lot of time to to um, right right think right. about it and when the box is the box is done and it's full you just mark what it is dining room put, we put everything in our garage put your put your uh box with first first to open too Brokers have suggested that. Oh, yeah, like so the, wine, open. the wine opener, That's the, the other wine bottle opener. I mean, you got to think about that stuff. You you don't want to be moving a lot of food and alcohol. Oh, no. So you got to start drinking that early. And I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't mean to, I don't well, mean to twist your arm at all. Me, my therapist <laughs> told me to finish everything that I've started. So, <laughs> um, I have a message from Tony V. Okay. He says, good work, you guys. I like this format way more. <laughs> oh, you're not quitting, Tony, are you? That, that nitwit sidekick was dragging you down. <laughs> well, we, we, have a mess you. we have a message for Tony yeah. V, and this is serious. Uh, he is the best in the world, and we want to see if he can figure out a way that we can do podcasts from Aruba. Uh, Ed, oh, you're nice. on this. Or if right? you can figure out a way to just get his ass back here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I like too. plan one, A. Okay. Well, a or B, those are our two yeah. plans. And and only if it should be you, me, Ed, of course, Tony, well, and Jackie is the fourth C. <laughs> I, I'm out. If Jackie comes, I am out. <laughs> how, how about a podcast in Africa? Oh, yeah, we could do that. Wow. I could call you guys in from the safari that yeah. I'm in. And I could show you all the giraffes and... I think Jackie will look pretty cool in the giraffe as he little, goes through. Little Jackie. I'm not little. bringing little Jackie to Africa. <laughs> little Jackie, Tony is. Little all right? Jackie's going need, to need his shots. <laughs> we, might right. have, we might have to end on that. So we can't wait till Tony V comes back. He'll be back next week. Um, thanks for joining us in the Real Estate House Party. Uh, thanks to all our studio and audience here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sponsors, uh, everyone that collectively joined us today. Tony V for being with us. Jackie, Ed Sullivan, and the paralegal extraordinaire, Kathy Holtzauza. This is Attorney Ricardo. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.